Hey, it's Sri here, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk you through three really important steps that you need to take when your man comes back after a separation. Before we dive in, I know that when you're having to go through a separation, it can create such pain, and it's, it's heartbreaking. I speak to women every single day who are going through that, and I know the, the uncertainty and the pain and the emotional stacking that kind of occurs as a result of these sorts of separations. It, it really does bring up the most intense pain that one could imagine. If you are in this situation, I want you to know that you're not alone. There are a lot of women who I speak to on a regular basis who are going through very, very similar circumstances and my heart goes out to you and it's the reason why I do what I do. So, you know, if you're in a position where you are struggling, you don't know what that next step is, you don't know how to actually save your marriage, that you're, you know, constantly watching video after video and you're getting contradictory information, you're not sure what steps you need to take then i'd love to be of service to you and so if you are needing some guidance then all you need to do is in the description section below just click on that link which just says book a call with me just click on that link choose a time that works for you and then i'll contact you at that scheduled time just to see if i can help in any particular way if i can then i'll make sure i give you some tips and tricks and some strategies on how you can actually go about creating the shifts that you're looking for in your marriage but also within your life as well make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you click on that bell notification as well so that every week you get access to my latest videos teaching you about male psychology and really learning about the male mind so you can maximize your chances of saving your marriage and really also healing from within and healing from infidelity as well because i know that when you're on the receiving end of infidelity it can create so much pain on the inside now i recall a few years ago working with a particular client and one of the things that she said when we started working, she said, Shri, I just want to save my marriage. That's it. I want my husband to come back because he had been separated from her for a few months. All she wanted to do was to get him back once the lease ended with his place that he was staying at. And so sure enough, after a few months, he actually came back. But what was really interesting was that when he came back, she started to feel even more insecure and even more uncertain about how the marriage was actually going to unfold as opposed to when they were actually separated. And it just goes to show that even though you want your husband to come back, it doesn't mean that if he comes back it's all sort of plain sailing and back to normal and everything will be wonderful again. There's some really important steps that you need to take when he comes back. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk you through three really important steps that you need to make sure you take when your husband comes back after a separation. Now the first step, is to make sure that you focus on action and not words. Now what I mean by that is that, let's say you and your husband have been separated for some time, and then he, you know, through interactions between the two of you, you've started to have some positive conversations and things are starting to improve, and then he throws that one on you and says, honey, I wanna come back home. Now you listen to it, and it probably gives you this flutter inside of thinking, oh my God, he wants to come back. Sometimes it can also bring up some nerves where, you know, you may have even found that over those few months that, you know, things have actually started to improve and you kind of have gotten used to this current environment. And now it's a situation where he wants to come back and that can start to create some friction inside of you. But often what also happens is in those moments, he'll probably say, look, I, I love you. I want to be with you. It was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I'm so sorry. And so on. Now in those moments, you're obviously getting a lot of promises from him as well. And you know he's probably talking about how committed he is and how much he wants the family and so on. But then what happens is, is that he moves back in and a lot of the things that he's talking about is not actually being followed through. And that can create a lot of pain. It can create a lot of frustration. And what it does, it really impacts your ability to trust him. It impacts your ability to fully open to him on an emotional level as well because there's one, you know, you've always feel like you've got one eye open in those moments. And that's why it's so crucial to make sure that you focus on actions and not words. If you're focusing on just what he's saying, then what can happen is that can lead you into this sort of false sense of security. It can get you to a place where you're like, oh my God, he's actually really committed to me. And your expectations start shooting up. You start thinking, oh my God, he's really committed to me. He's going to really make this work. He's committed to our family. And then what happens is there might be a moment where, you know, he stays at work late or he doesn't honor what he said he's going to do and immediately that's going to throw you off. Because you have these expectations and those expectations aren't being met 
And then there's a part of your brain that starts going, oh my God, can I trust this man? I don't know. I'm not sure what to do next. I'm so scared and so on. So we can really, really take over at that point. Whereas if you're focusing on action and not the words, yes, of course, when he comes back, it creates a bit of enjoyment, a bit of excitement. I get that. But by focusing on actions and not words, it means you're going to stay a lot more grounded, a lot more centered in those moments. So what that means is that, you know, when he starts to act in a really good way or he's committing to you or he's honoring his commitments, then you can evaluate what's happening based on what he's actually doing rather than the potential of it happening. And I see it all the time. People get so caught up in the potential for things to happen rather than what's actually happening. You have to go with the actual facts. You have to go with what's actually happening. And I promise you, when you start to do that, it means that you're gonna be able to evaluate the situation in so much more of a centered and grounded way rather than being caught up in expectations not being met and being in a lot of pain because you thought he was gonna do something for you and he didn't or he said he was gonna take the kids to soccer practice but he didn't or whatever it may be. You know, those things won't bother you so much because you're taking an approach which is gonna give you more clarity on the situation. So the first thing always is to make sure you focus on actions and not words. Secondly, you don't wanna jump the gun. Now in moments like this, there's gonna be a part of you that you know obviously hears him saying, look, I really wanna make this work and immediately your brain goes, oh my God, it's so exciting. You know, he's really wanting to make this work. He's really committed to me. I'm so happy, I'm the happiest person ever. And you're also gonna to want to be overly enthusiastic and excited about things that's going to impact the ability of you to reconciling in a really, really positive and powerful way. So even if he comes back, we have to remember that the marriage got to a certain point for a reason. And so if we just think that it's all gonna be, you know, wonderful and beautiful straight away, Often what happens is in our mind, we're actually lacking a bit of clarity. We're actually not very grounded and we're not very centered in any of it. And so we start making rash decisions. We start showing more desperation in those moments and that can create a lot of pain. So you need to make sure that you don't jump the gun, that you don't expect a whole bunch of things, that you're not just thinking it's gonna go back to the way it was overnight. You have to make sure that you're taking each day as it comes and that you're making sure that in each moment, you're seeing it as a learning opportunity for how you two can grow together. It's really important to do that. You don't wanna jump the gun and be overly excited about everything. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to be grateful for the fact that you have this opportunity to work on things. But don't jump the gun. Don't think that it's all perfect and wonderful immediately. You've gotta allow yourself to play the long game and to really stay very, very centered and grounded in all of this and emotionally balanced. Because when you do that, it's gonna give yourself the best chance of being able to rectify the situation. And then thirdly, you wanna make sure that you're identifying your own challenges and wounds throughout the situation. You see, if your husband has left you, you're going to be wounded on some level. Doesn't mean you're broken, doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you, it just means that you're hurt. Just like if you were to go outside and you know have a little fall, then you know, you're probably gonna get some scratches. It's the same thing. If you've had an external experience like your husband leaving you, you're gonna be wounded. There's gonna be some things that are going to affect you. There's gonna be wounds of rejection or abandonment or some form of fear that comes up as well. You have to make sure that you're working through those. Now, I know that some people sometimes feel that that's a little bit scary, but I promise you, it's so important. And it's actually the most important thing that you need to actually work on because when you do that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna show up in your marriage so much better. When you have the conversations that you need to have with your husband, it's not gonna trigger you so much. If he spends an extra half an hour at work, it's not gonna bring up those feelings of you know, abandonment or feeling like he's not making you a priority anymore. Those sorts of things won't trigger you as much because you've healed a lot of the internal wounds. See, it all starts from within. If we can really heal from the inside and do a lot of that deep work, I promise you all other aspects of your life, including your marriage, are gonna make some big, big shifts. It's really, really important. Now I know, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit scary to, you know, face up to some of these things and to confront it. And actually, 
it's not as scary as you think. That's what I want you to firstly remember. It's actually really exciting because once you start getting a taste of it, I'm telling you, it's incredible. It's, it's such a transformative experience and something that will bring you so much more joy. But what happens is the human brain is always looking out to protect us, but it's not helping us to thrive in any way. So immediately it thinks, oh, I have to work on myself. I've got to do some uncomfortable work on me. Jeez, this is a bit difficult. So what it does is it does nothing and it protects you in the short term though, not in the long term. And we have to focus on what we can do to protect ourselves in the long run. We've got to focus on how we can grow and how we can get better and how we can succeed and how we can have these beautiful relationships. And that's all done when you do the internal work on yourself. And I don't just mean going to the gym or you know, going and having a drink with some friends or whatever. I mean really doing some deep dive stuff into yourself, understanding what your fears are, understanding what your deeper wounds are, understanding you know, what are those deeper fears that you hold on to, understanding what you've suppressed, all of those things. And when you do that, when you recognize that, you will show up in your life in so many beautiful ways in all areas. You know, people will be saying to you, you've made such beautiful changes, this is amazing. Like, what have you done? You just look so radiant. And that's what you can expect to see when you start creating some deep shifts inside. Now, I know part of you might be going, well, what do I actually do? What steps do I take? I have no idea. I don't even know what working on myself means. And that's totally cool. And it's a very, very common place for a lot of people. And if you are feeling like that, that's the reason why I put together my Authentic Relationship System Training Program, which is it's an amazing program. It's a nine-week comprehensive training program that's going to teach you specifics on you know, how to save your marriage, how to awaken your goddess within, how to go deep into male psychology, how to improve your communication. There is an extensive amount of information in there, as well as what I believe is the greatest support structure of any training program out there, because we go deep we go into a level of transformation and you get to work with me personally for a long, long period of time. So it's really, really powerful stuff. And if you've you know, connected with some of my material, my videos, and you're interested in the idea of potentially working with me and connecting with some incredible women in the community, then I encourage you to, in the description section below, just click on that link which just says book a call with me. Click on that link, choose a time that works for you, and then I will contact you at the scheduled time and I can learn a little bit more about your situation, just see where you're at right now, where you want to get to, and, and if this program can help you to bridge that gap as well. I'm really proud of a lot of the shifts that so many of my clients have made, and you know, hopefully we can do the same for you maybe. So once again, just click on that link below, choose a time that works for you, and I'll contact you at that scheduled time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, make sure you hit the like button below. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this video as well. I always love hearing the beautiful comments and questions as well. So please send them through and I'll make sure I respond to every single one of them. If you want to learn how to stop emasculating a man, click this video above. If you want to learn what to do when your husband leaves you, just click this video above. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you in the next video.